How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Um, so, we made it through qualification uh, stages in the World Cup and we are through to the group stages and we have come out of the qualification group of death and directly into the group stages group of death. Um, so our group as you can see here is Peru and that's us, Italy and Ecuador. Um, so, yeah, this group is, is lethal. Italy are obviously an incredibly strong team. Um, I don't know where they came last, uh, last year, but it was certainly top eight, I think. Um, Ecuador, can't sleep on Ecuador, some good players there. Uh, and Peru also, like, there are a couple of regional champions playing um, for the Peru team, uh, including my opponent this week, Diego. Um, so this group is pretty brutal, uh, to the point where I don't think we're the favourites to, again, top two make it out of this group. I don't think we'd be favoured to make it out of this group. Um, Obviously we can, um, it's it's very possible, um, but this group is is very, very tough. And we were actually very close to having France as our fourth as well, which would have been, <laughs> instead of Ecuador, that would have been kind of a nightmare. Um, but, um, what was I saying? Yes. Uh, hold on, was it Peru that came, was it Italy that came top eight last year or Peru? I can't remember, one of them came top eight last year. Um, yeah, so week one we're against Peru. Um, so my opponent, I think, hasn't really revealed much. Like, like I said, he won a regional um, in Latam not too long ago, and he's just used his regional winning team for the last couple of tournaments. Uh, sorry, the last couple of games he's played in the World Cup. Uh, I don't think he'll do that now. I think it's very likely he's going to change up. Largely because, I mean, the teams that I've played so far, the like the Bangkok Slow Row team and like um, Zation. Caloric Shadow, uh, both match up pretty well into uh, the team he's been using. Um, so I reckon he changes it up, um, and so I've changed it up as well, as you can see over here. Um, we've got my old Palkia Cali Ice team that I'm using. Um, just a bit of a mix up, it's a team I'm comfortable with that's different from what I've been using so far. Um, match that decently into the team he's comfortable with in case he does bring that. Um, yeah, that's kind of the theory behind the team choice. Um, now, I was on stream this week, I was on the Victory Road stream, so I wasn't able to record commentary live, so what I have done instead is I'm just going to um, do like a, a post analysis of the video. Um, so not quite the same, but I think still equally interesting. Uh, I can kind of go with my thought processes, um, how things played out, that kind of stuff, in a bit more depth. So yeah, um, stick around, go to watch. If you enjoy, please do leave a like on the video, uh, sub to the channel if you haven't already. Um, go follow me on Twitch, link to that in the description. And also make sure to let me know if, uh, if this kind of post uh, analysis stuff is, is helpful or useful to you. I can do it more for my own sets, I can do it for other people's sets as well if you think it's interesting content. So yeah, um, if you enjoy, uh, make sure to drop a comment as well, just to uh, let me know that this is this is interesting content for you. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into it. Right. So, um, I mean, this, this, the footage is going to be kind of paused and played. I'm just going to talk over it a bit better, so it's not going to be constantly ongoing. But the first thing to look up, look at here is the matchup. Now, my opponents brought pretty standard Lunadon stuff, which I'm very, very surprised by. Um, I was very much not expecting this to be the case, uh, which is why I brought this team because like Lunadon is a pretty poor matchup for this team, largely because Lunala can really shut down Mimikyu um, pretty hard because it just ignores Disguise with its uh, Moonglaze Beam. Um, but I wasn't expecting to bring Lunala because the previous three games I brought Eveltal, Calyrex Shadow, and Eveltal again. Um, and both of the teams that I've used previously to this have a pretty strong matchup into this kind of archetype. Um, so yeah, needless to say, I'm very, very surprised uh, to see this, but I did have a game plan for it. Um, I think it's one of those matchups where the game plan for it becomes very read heavy. Um, so I can set up Trick Room, I think 100% of the time actually here, if I lead Mimikyu and Moongus. Uh, and click Rage Powder Trick from in front of Lunala, but the problem with that is it leaves me potentially kind of vulnerable to, um, like, I have to then use my Trick Room turns or I lose the game. Um, so it immediately puts me on the back foot because I am forced to play aggressive. Um, and also there's the risk they could just lead Charizard Lunala and just go for Wildfire Moon Guys Beam, just double KO me turn one. Um, so my thought process here was I thought my opponent would go for... Um, to go for that kind of lead just to try and shut down the trick room setup, so I thought I'd try and counter out that by going for the fast mode, Randy Lucky Palkia, because um, if they lead Charizard and Lunala, that gives me the option to go for Electro Ebb and 
uh, Geyser into Charizard, or Electroweb and, and Wormwind into, or Geyser into Lunala, for example. Um, just to kind of shut down the Charizard's offensive presence. Um, that was kind of the thinking behind it. I, um, what they ended up leading, if I skip forward a bit, uh, as you can see here, is they led with um, Venus or Lunala, which is pretty bad for me. Um, I thought they wouldn't lead this because this team's public. I've got safety goggles with uh, Mimikyu on this. I figured, like, goggles Mimikyu could set up Trick Room pretty comfortably in front of this. Um, so, I didn't think they'd lead this. Um, however, what I'm now worried about is sleep powders. Um, so, this turn one, you'll see I end up focusing down the Venusaur um, with Electro and Spatial Rend. Um, uh, once my opponent's locked in their move. Um, the thinking there being, I want to shut down that sleep powder threat as soon as possible. Because um, that's a big issue for my back end. But they end up just maxing their Venusaur. Uh, which puts me in a really bad spot immediately. Um, so I could have potentially gone for, like I kind of said previously, a max and hit Lunala. But the risk of maxing my Palkia is the sleep powder. Um, but what ends up happening here is I end up hitting in the actual web. And then Spatial Ren does not very much damage, because um, it turns out this Venusaur is like super super bulky. Um, so we'll see here, like this wouldn't have even KO'd even if it hadn't Dynamaxed. Which is good information, um, but yeah I just hit by, I get hit by Max Ooze which is an interesting choice on Venusaur, you don't often see that. Um, so I learned later in the game um, that it has that over um, Weather Ball, it has Sludge Bomb over Weather Ball, um, but the problem now is I've got a boosted Lunala which is just going to flatten my bulk here, right? Um, and so immediately this game one is going very poorly. Um, so I'm trying to remember who I bring in here. I think it's probably Calyrex, right? Because the option I have now with Calyrex is to try and bluff this. Um, with policy, I can go for like max Calyrex, and they can potentially, if they if they go for a hit into Calyrex, I can KO them here. Um, however, I think one thing about matchups that are, are kind of not in your favour is a lot of the time you have to be very aggressive with it and make a lot of big reads because um, if you if you both if you and your opponent both play safe you end up losing because your matchup is worse um, so I think if I remember correctly what I end up doing here is I end up going Volt Switch off Lunala and Hailstorm into Lunala um, yeah however I think what I should have done there is I should have gone for Quake Boosts um, first of all because it covers an Incineroar switch in which I think my opponent actually did I can't remember uh, maybe not but, yeah, it covers the Incineroar switch, um, as well as giving me a special defense boost, and if they hit my um, Calyrex with a super effective attack and give me my policy, the Quake will kill anyway, and I think I have to bank on my opponent doing that. Um, but, yeah, so Lunala stays in. Um, Dynamax animation lasts for 400 years. Um, and I believe there was no Protect this turn. Be wrong. Yeah, no protect. So I, I do kill the Lunala. Um, so again, like the, my, the reason I end up going for Hellstorm is because I was worried that in this kind of situation, if they hit my Aleki uh, rather than hit my Calyrex, then I wouldn't have picked up the KO with Max Quake. But yeah, I, th I think in hindsight it would have been smarter just to go for and get because a Quake boost on Incin here is really useful because um, it means that Venusaur is not really doing much damage to it. Um, so yeah, Vine Lash into Incin, which does loads. Um, yeah, another Quake boost would mean I could live that plus Vine Lash chip, but they didn't give it to me. Meteor Beam hits. I can't remember who they hit with this actually. I think they may have actually hit the Reggie Lucky. Um, no, okay, yeah, they hit the horse which does a million damage, but again, a Quake boost there would have been super valuable. Um, and uh, plus D Max Quake from here would have picked up the Lulala anyway, and it would have covered an instant switch in. Uh, instead, I just pick up the KO with the Hailstorm, I end up with no Quake boosts here. Um, Lunala drops, and then I'm just going to jump forward a little bit. So I'm going to switch in the next one. I believe they bring it, bringing their ground on. Um, So now I'm thinking my opponent probably wants to go Weather Ball here, right? If they have it, like Max Flare into my Calyrex. Um, if they have Max Flare, um, which I don't believe they end up doing, I believe they end up going for a Quake into Incin.
Um, switch ground now, which makes sense, protect that. Um, especially if you're going after my Incineroar here, you don't want your Groudon to get clocked by a Hailstorm. Um, go for a Max God, because I'm predicting here the... Um, uh, weather Ball. Um, I think to me that kind of says that there's no Weather Ball in this Venusaur. Um, so yeah, I get rid of the Venusaur here. I think maybe this wasn't the correct play, um, but I think I needed to get rid of the Venusaur, else it starts sleep powdering me forever. Uh, and Incin goes down here, which is a problem. Because um, if I was still at Incin alive, I could have potentially switched my uh, my Aleki out, got my Incin back in to get some Intimidates down, uh, gone for a double protect on Calyrex to try and get a fake out, that kind of stuff. Um, but as it stands, yeah, it's, it's Incin Growled against... Um, Eleki and a 0 HP Calyrex, basically. Um, if I had a bit more HP left on my Calyrex, then maybe this is doable, but as it stands, like my Sash on Eleki's getting broken by Vine Lash. It can't touch Groudon. So, um... I think I just, yeah, t ball into a Hailstorm Groudon, right? Oh, I Max... Oh, no, I'll, yeah, that's what I do, I Max Guard. Because um, what my win condition here I'm, I'm aiming for is... Um, I t ball the Incin. Um... And I max guard. And if I get the T ball off, um, sorry, if I get the max guard off, uh, uh, I sh can maybe two shot the Incin with T ball, which, uh, yeah, I do. Um, so like, if I get the max guard there and growl on double misses precipice blades, um, and then next turn I T ball the Incin and growl on misses another precipice blades, then I win. Um, so it's obviously not likely at all, but that is the win con I'm going for there. Um, and in a situation like that, you have to identify that, like what is the unlikely circumstance that lets me win this game. Uh, and in that case, it was, like I said, it was the, it was like double max guard, T bolt, two shots, they miss P blades, or I have the option to like, well not option, but there's a chance that I like paralyze their Incineroar, uh, and they get fully paralyzed a couple of times, and Groudon misses one hit into, um, into the. Um, Calyrex, I get a Glacial Lance off, kill the Groudon, the Incin gets fully paralysed, I horsefire, that kind of thing. So I was trying to give myself an out there, didn't get it. Um, so, into game two. Oops, I think I already locked in. Yeah, so I think what I end up locking in pretty quickly in game two is I go for the uh, Mimikyu and Moongus Incin Calyrex play here. I just leave uh, Palkia in the back, because I think Incin and Calyrex are both too valuable here. Um, but again, this leads to the problem where if my opponent can stall around my trick room well enough that I end up with very little momentum. Um, and I think I made a couple of good aggressive plays in this next game. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of always on the back for this match and I just jump forward. So they go for the same lead. So I was kind of confident that I think that I'd be able to get away with it. I thought, um, like, you know, what's Vini doing here? Um, so I just go for the standard Rage Powder and... Um, Trick Room, and they just, I believe, if I remember correctly, they end up actually going big with Venu, which I thought was kind of surprising. Um, yeah, big Venu, I'm just going to skip that because the Nightmare Accelerator is a bit of years long, and they go for an Ooze into Mimikyu, breaks my disguise. Um, actually, very smart of them not to double into the Amoongus, because if you double the Amoongus there, um, I think it would have killed. I could be wrong. Um, I'll have to look at how much damage this uh, Amoongus beam does. I might not have done, actually. Okay, Disguise goes. Uh, Moongeist hits my... Uh, hits my Moongus. And does... How much does that do? Yeah, so I don't think the news would have picked up from there. So actually, um, either way. But you don't want to risk like critting and giving me a free switch into Calyrex. Now, this next turn is very interesting. Um, and the reason this next turn is interesting is because... Um, like, my obvious play here is to go for a Spore into Lunala and something with Mimikyu, I don't know. Um, and I was kind of thinking, okay, if my opponent takes out my Amoongus here to get around the Spore threat, then I get Calyrex in for free, but I realise now that there is no reason for my opponent to ever do that. Um, so I think, again, this is the kind of turn where in this very negative matchup I should have tried to make a very hard read and play very aggressive. Um, so in hindsight, I think my play here, um, I'll just skip through this, I do end up just going for Spore into Lunala, um, and I don't know what Mimikyu does, I think I taunt the Venusaur, just so it can't max guard next turn if I get my Calyrex in. Um, 
but what I could have done here, and probably should have done, in fact, is I should have switched my Calyrex into the Amoogus slot reading this Protect. And I was worried about switching the Calyrex in, because I was like, oh, okay, what if they get a bunch of damage down on my Calyrex, and I lose it as an option. But they don't want to knock out my Amoongus here, because, like I said, I get my free switch into Calyrex, and then I just go side proc, weakness policy, and Glacial Lance, and I just win. Um, so what I probably should have done here, because they take out my Mimikyu here, which gets rid of the side proc <clears throat> option on Calyrex. That's my opponent's best play. So I probably should have made a very aggressive read there, switched into my Calyrex, and side shadow sneak to that turn. Um, so I don't actually, like, do any damage to my opponent or anything, that turn, but then I get into a situation where I could bring my Amoongus back in into the Mimikyu slot, and now I can just start pressing Glacial Lance. And I think that should always have been my um, my play there. There's there's obviously still ways for my opponent to get around that, because I think Venusaur was, yeah, still at full health. So they could have max guarded, they could have switched the Lunala into Insin on the um, on the Glacial Lance so that the Venusaur lived, because the Venusaur was very bulky, I think it would have lived that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I had ways of getting around that. I could have also, if I was feeling greedy, gone for... Um, Actually, it's not even that greedy. What I could have done is I could have gone for, um, if I got my Amoongus back in that situation, I then have Pollen Puff into the Lunala and Max Quake, which means that if they stay in with Lunala, they've used their Protect, so they'd probably never go for another one. If they stay in with Lunala, they get hit by the Pollen Puff, breaks the Shadow Shield, and I Quake, and I kill their Lunala. Or if they switch in the Insane, it's just dead to the Quake, right? So either way, I'm picking up a KO on that slot. Um, but instead, now I'm in a position where I haven't got my policy off on my Calyrex, uh, and so this Insane switching is now very, very free, because as we will see in a second, it's safety goggles. Um, so at this point in the game, I am not in great shape. Uh, Spore hits the safety goggles, I believe I just go for a Glacial Lance here, yeah. So, that's at minus one. So, let me think. If I was at plus one, minus one's one. Two thirds? Oh, actually, so plus one probably would have killed. So, actually, even in that situation where, um... Like, in the hypothetical situation where I get my policy off on Calyrex, even if Instant switches in, I can probably actually just go for a Glacial Lance there and kill the Venusaur. Um, I probably still would've gone for the Quake play, but... Um, yeah, now I've got my Instant in way too early. I've lost all my pivoting power with the Instant Roar. Um, which means it's not a threat to Growl in the back. Um, and Trick Room's gonna run out soon, so I'm not gonna be able to... I, I won't be able to get another Trick Room up with Lunala in the back. Um, so my Instant can't really do much. So, I have to start playing very aggressive, basically. Um, now, what I went for here, I went for Throat Chop, and I went for a max here to Hailstorm the Venusaur. This is another play that I probably could have made a little bit better. Because, um, <clears throat> from my opponent's point of view here, um, the max on Cal like Calyrex is my only real max option now. I have to max the Calyrex. Um, Venusaur's taunted, it can't ever protect, but I don't think my opponent ever fakes out my Rex here. So what I should have done is I should have saved myself a max turn by just going for Glacial Lance here, because that would have got some free damage down on, on the Incense slot. Um, plus it would have KO'd with the Venusaur. I'm not really scared of um, of the um, of the fake out, because I don't think they're ever going to fake out that slot. And like you see here, they do end up bringing in their Groudon. So they clearly hard read that I was just going to go for a max here and either Hailstorm Venu or Quake into um, Incense. So if I had just gone for the Glacial Lance, there I am back at neutral, plus I have a chunk of damage down on Groudon. Um, which puts me in a much better position, because let me see, how much did the... Um, I can't remember how much the Throat Chop did. Um, I don't think minus one Glacial Lance would have killed, um, but it would have done a lot of damage. Um, so I do get my Hailstorm off into Venu, but it doesn't really, like, that's not much for me here. Um, I KO the Venusaur, but then Instinct comes back in, it gets a free Intimidate down again. Um, I shouldn't make bring in Venu, I think I end up making a pretty aggressive play this next turn, but... Um, okay, I'm going to throw Chop the Groudon, which I'll end up doing... Like, I can't remember how much this does, but it's not very much. Uh, yeah, so like, I don't think a plus one Hailstorm would have... Uh, sorry, plus one Glacial Lance would have killed there, but like I said, it would have saved me another turn of max, and it would have been some damage down on Groudon. So it's it's better than better than nothing. It just puts a little bit of pressure on my opponent. Um, but now actually, because this is the last turn of Trick Room, I think my opponent brings in Lunala. Um, was it last? No, it wasn't the last turn of Trick Room. Sorry, I think that was one more turn of Trick Room after this. Um, so my opponent brings in Lunala here, um, and at this point, I do make a very aggressive read because I think, okay, last turn of Trick Room, my opponent wants to stall this wants to stall this out. I'm gonna hard read this Insin coming in, which I get correct. Um, 
And so Lunala goes for the protect this turn. Um, spoilers. Where is it? Yeah, so Lunala protects, I get this turn correct. Um, but because I'm now at minus one, again, my Quake just doesn't do enough to insin, basically. Um, yeah, I don't quite kill with the double up of, of this plus Flare Blitz, and because it's goggles, it's not taking any damage from the Hail Chip. Um, so a KO there would have been really good. Um, even if I didn't do it with Calyrex and get my boost back, it would have given me a pretty free swing into Groudon. Uh, I don't think this kills right. Yeah, no. Um, would have given me a nice swing into Groudon, but now my opponent um, is in pretty commanding position here. Um, Hellstorm does break the uh, Shadow Shield and Lunala, which is nice at least, but... Yeah, I mean, outside of Trick Room with these two on the field, with a Groudon on the back, it's it's kind of already over. Um, I don't know what I do here. I think I end up making a read they go into Calyrex. Um, do I? Oh, no, sorry. I read that they'd switch their Groudon in. Um, so, again, I'm just going for an aggressive read here, because I think I have to. If they if they make the sensible play here, which they end up doing, I just always lose, basically. Because um, my Calyrex is never killing Lunala from this range. Um... My thinking on the Hailstorm is it'll kill Insin, and if Groudon switches in, it'll kill Groudon. I probably should have gone for a Quake boost here, actually, because a Quake boost could have potentially let me live an extra hit from Lunala. Um, so, and like, even if they switch in their Groudon there, I think the Quake boost is still probably better, but they just go for the central player, which they fake out my Insin, and they also Meteor Beam into my Insin. Um, there's another potential out here where Meteor Beam misses. Um, in with, and in that situation, another Quake boost is super valuable because getting a Spit F boost on my Insin means another Spit F boost on my Insin means that I can, if Groudon misses a Precipice Blades, I can probably kill the Lunala. Um, but they hit. Um, Insin goes down. And, I mean, yeah, fairly obviously, there's not really anything I do here. That grade didn't matter. Um, like, pretty obviously, there's nothing I can do in this situation. Uh, I've just taken too much damage. And with just the one Quake boost, I've not, I've not given myself enough bulk to. Um, to do anything with this, I'm just going to skip past this, basically, yeah, my opponent just hits me with a, a Moon Quest Beam and it kills. Um, so yeah, that was my uh, that was my round one of group stages, didn't win, first time I've lost in the World Cup so far. Um, but it's one of those ones where like the matchup was really rough, um, and I'm very surprised my opponent brought this six into what I've, uh, into me given what I've previously run, but I mean, you know, sometimes you run into a bad matchup. I think I played pretty well. Um, like I said, I was kind of coming from behind for most of it, um, just because of the matchup. I think I played decently, but I, I, I probably should have, I think I pointed out a few times in the video, I should have just played more aggressively, basically. Um, what I needed to do there was I needed to make more reads, um, like I pointed out the big one in, in a couple, well, actually a couple of big ones in, in game two in particular. Um, I could have gone for the switch and Calyrex side sneak play um, on the turn they kill my Mimikyu, because then I get a lot of momentum under Trick Room. Um, I could have gone for, like, not maxing the turn I did, and gone for um, Glacial Lance instead of wasting a turn of max on a Hailstorm. I could have gone for, um, I don't know what the other one was, but, um, yeah, sorry, I could have gone for a Quake instead of a, um, a Hailstorm into Incin on that second to last turn just to give me another potential out. Um, I still don't think I win, I think I would have needed to crit the Groudon, uh, sorry, crit the Lunala. Um, or, well, actually, I would have set up Trick from then. I guess I still probably would have had to crit Lunala from there. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's... I don't know. I could have played a bit more aggressively, and I should have done in this kind of matchup. Um, but the thing is, though, like, all of those potential plays have counterplay, right? Because if my opponent does just fake out my Calyrex on the turn that I maxed, um, and I went for a Glacial Lance, I just lose on the spot, right? So my Calyrex goes down. Uh, and similar, well, it goes down, but it takes way too much damage. And then, similarly, if I go for, um, or actually, even if the instant just stays in and goes for a Flare Blitz, I, I think I'd lose my Calyrex there. Um, and then, again, with the, the Calyrex switch in, side sneak play, if my opponent goes off for a Moongus there, um, I'm in a really bad spot. Like, even if I just take a Quake onto um, Calyrex, like, Quake plus Vines is doing a lot. Uh, it's doing a lot of damage to me. Um... So yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, I can't beat myself up because I didn't make those calls because they are tough calls to make, but I think, yeah, the matchup called for me to play a bit more aggressively and I didn't didn't quite do it. And my, my opponent played very solidly. Like, they, didn't, they didn't ever give me any free um, positioning. Like, one <clears throat> one thing that a lot of um, 
less strong players will do when they're playing against Trickery is like a lot of the time they'll see free KOs and they'll try and, well not free KOs, but they'll see KOs and they'll take them and then, I think I pointed this out at the start of game 2 as well, my opponent was smart specifically to not double my Amoongus. Because breaking the Disguise on Mimikyu when there's Lunala in front of it doesn't actually do that much. Um, but, like I said, if you double, if they double the Mimikyu there, oh sorry, double the Amoongus there, then I get my Trickery up and I get a free switch to Calyrex and now they're in a bad spot. So it's, it's stuff like that, little kind of little tweaks here and there, um, where my opponent just played the matchup well. Like, the, they had an advantage, and they didn't need to make any big reads or anything, but they played very solid and just didn't give me any footing, basically. Um, so, like, against another player, maybe if I played aggressively and made those reads, then they would have given me a little bit of an eye in, and I would have been able to capitalise on it. But, I mean, Diego's a very good player. Like I said, he won a regional um, not long ago. So, you know, you lose some. It happens. Um, but it's fine, I'm just going to win the next two and we're going to get through the group stages. Um, yeah, that is that is going to be it for my analysis of this. Um, like I said, if you enjoy the analysis stuff, like kind of the, the post-match analysis, if you want to if you have any feedback on maybe how it done differently, what would have been better in my analysis, like bits you would have rather seen me focus on, that kind of stuff, then, then do let me know. Um, and yeah, as always, if you enjoyed the content, leave a like on the video, sub to the channel. Uh, if you haven't already, go follow me on Twitch as well, link to that is in the description, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.